Hey guys, Jason Timothy here, musicsoftwaretraining.com. And today I'm gonna get into uh, one, making 128s, which is a sample selector. So you can quickly choose through, let's say a bunch of kick drums, a bunch of snares, uh, really, really quickly. And the second thing I wanna show you is how you can save a lot of CPU when you do this. Because essentially you don't want to have a hundred or more instruments turned on at the same time. It's gonna take up a lot of CPU. So this way, it only turns on the sample that's being selected at a particular time, which is great. So let's go ahead and get into it and I'll show you how to do both. So for this, we're just gonna use a simpler instrument. So we've got a simpler, we're just gonna group this. And then if we click over here, you can see we've got our simpler here and we could duplicate this as many times as we want. All right, so we duplicate this here, copy both of those, duplicate again, Command or Control A to highlight, Command D to duplicate again. So eight samples right now. So let's just, uh, we're gonna go with kicks. So let's just, we'll just go kick one, Kick two, kick three, and so forth. Actually, I'll just get rid of these because once you figure out how to do it with just a few, you can figure out how to do it with, you know, up to 128. So once we have this, uh, we would drag our separate samples in, okay? So let's come over to our samples folder and I'll just search some kicks. Great. And so this one here, we'll just pull this in, this in, this in, okay? Then the next thing we wanna do is we want to go to our chain and we want to distribute these evenly or we can just go one, zero, one, and two, all right? Because it always starts on zero. So this means if I assign this, right click here, and assign that, we now have a chain selector. And when I move this, as you can see, this will choose the sound depending on where it's located. And right now it's just zero, one, and two, okay? So as you can see, all of these are turned on and ready to go. And that's not necessarily what we want because that takes more CPU. So the next step that we would take is just come to our first kick. We'll right click and we'll map this also to the chain selector. And then we'll right click again and then we can map uh, to the other two sounds just by map to siblings. And that way all of these will be mapped to the chain selector. So the next thing we wanna do is just hit map. And over here, we've got kick one, two, and three. So we just decide, okay, this is gonna be zero. This one's gonna be one. And this one's gonna be two. So this way, and we can turn map off now, and we can close the chain. And now, this will only turn on the one that's selected. So if I go ahead and use the chain selector, I can, so now, as you can see, this one here is selected and it's turned on. We go to one. Now that one's selected and turned on, and two, two. And now that one's turned on and the other ones are turned off. So when you get a lot of samples in a chain selector, that's gonna save a lot of CPU. Now what's cool about using the simpler instrument as opposed to, let's say a drum rack, is that each sample you can play across the keyboard so you can get all the different keys for whatever you select. Whereas with the drum rack instrument, 
you'd have to assign transpose to one of your macros. So you could do that as well if you want, but it could just be a little bit quicker. And then with programming, you could actually have several different pitches in your MIDI, whereas you would have to automate your transpose. You'd have to assign this here, and then you'd have to automate this in your drum rack, all right? So just something to think about. But if you want to make 128s with multiple sounds, you know, kicks, snare, hi-hats, and so forth, then you might want to use a drum rack. So let's dive into that real quick. If I come over here, back into instruments, we'll just drag in a drum rack instrument. And we could just drag into C1. If you're using your QWERTY keyboard and you hit the A key, it's probably going to hit above. Normally, by default, it hits at C3. So we could either drop samples on C3 or we just hit the Z key until we get down to C1. The A key is always a C. So hitting the Z or X goes up or down an octave. Once we have that, then we want to come into our samples again. Once again, we'll go and just search kicks for right now. And we'll drag a kick in here. Now, this is going to be fairly crucial. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is group this. So Command G to group this. So it's kind of like a group within a group. And then we want to do our assigning right at this point. So let's assign this to macro one. And then let's also come over here to our chain and assign this to uh, macro one as well. Now we've got our chain selector and so forth. So we want this mapped uh, first off because what we're going to do is as opposed to going the easy way and dragging all these in is probably better to duplicate. And the reason that is, is because as you can see, now all of these are mapped. If you drag all these in and they're, they're different, let me just show you if, you. if you just drag in another sample like this, right? As you can see, it's not mapped. So you would have to map every sample that you drag in uh, separately. But if you do it like this, you could simply duplicate and then you can drag in different samples into their separate places. And as you can see, it renames them. So that makes it a lot faster. All right, cool. So the, now the next thing is we need to separate these through our chain. And we could either do what we did before and we could say, okay, this one's going to be, oops, let me just make sure we're only selecting one here. We could say, okay, this is going to be one. This one's going to be two. This one's going to be three and so forth. We could do it like that. Or what we can do is we can just highlight all of these and then just pull this across and then I'll, I'll pull this back here. So all of these are all the way across and then we can right click and distribute ranges equally. And then when we click on it, we can see that range. So that's zero to 20. There's 21 to 41, you know, and so forth. So now when we come over here to do our mapping, as you can see, we've got our separate deals here. So we can just say, okay, this is zero, to 20. This one is 21 to 41. And then we come to the third, 42 to 62. And I know this part is a little bit tedious, but it, it'll save a lot of CPU. 63 to 83. And this will have to be 84 to 127. So now, once again, this is only going to turn on when that specific 
sound is selected. So that's how you do 128 and also save CPU in both Simpler and Drum Racks. So I hope that helps and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Don't forget, like the video, share if you know other producers that could use this information. It really helps the channel. And with that, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.